Well, the Uber drivers have got beef. Protesting they are. It's just everyone just wants to protest these days, isn't it? I swear, it's just like, oh, that's just something to do. Yeah, just go protest, I suppose. We do the weekend, I don't want to go pub, just want to go protest, saying, you know, something a bit different. Silicon Valley nonsense, will Uber drivers be heard? Why are they protesting? I don't know, let's have a look. Uber drivers protested around the world on Wednesday, around the fucking world. It was a spirited, though largely unquantifiable, demonstration against what they see as disgracefully low wages, poor job security, and an unacceptable lack of benefits. Now, what is the deal with working for Uber? Don't you work with Uber? Isn't that what it is? So, right. Above all, though, it was a rallying cry against the expanding gulf between their lives and the lives of those who will become unfathomably rich when Uber makes its stock market debut on Friday. I have no problem with the company making money, said Eddie Wheeler, an Uber driver for almost three years. What I have a problem with is the way they made it. They made the value of off my back and the backs of every driver. Oh, preach, comrade. <clears throat> People like Mr. Wheeler have little collective power. They cannot unionize, though they are some, there are some emerging groups trying to help represent the needs of gig workers, albeit without a real seat at the negotiating table. The... the if it, uh, Efficacy. <laughs> That's a word I've never read before. Efficacy of this kind of action is that right? Um, is also held back by the very issue they're fighting against. Many drivers simply couldn't afford to take the time off to join in. Still, drivers are doing what they can to make their voices heard, as well as those protesting in person on Wednesday. A number more said they plan to contribute by turning off their apps for a set amount of time, in some cases as long as 24 hours, in an attempt to limit the number of drivers out on the road and make it harder for customers to get a ride. There's always the customers that suffer these days, isn't there? But a source, told, a source at Albert Uber told me that the impact has been minuscule. In New York, fewer than 1% of drivers that would typically drive on Wednesday switched off, and we have no way of knowing if that was even part of the protest. More broadly, in all the cities that took part, Uber did not see any meaningful effect on its service. There were no noticeable increases in wait times or instances of surge pricing, whereby fares go up because there are fewer drivers available. A waste of time, then? Perhaps. It's certainly hard for drivers to be enthusiastic about the chances of getting better terms from Uber, when on Friday a whole new batch of eager shareholders will be pushing for the company to turn around its enormous losses. Nobody from Uber addressed the protests in San Francisco. Well, it would be, wouldn't it? Or at any of the other locations globally. In a statement, the firm and its main competitor, Lyft, said it was always looking at ways to improve its relationship with its workers. Drivers at the protest said they had reached breaking point and feel Uber should ignore the concerns at their peril. It's not livable, said Annette Rivero, a driver for two years. She said she drives 12 to 14 hours a day. The time we're putting in is dangerous. It's too many hours to be out on the road. Those concerns might find these drivers a different audience that can help. Government. On the presidential campaign trail, most Democrat candidates have backed an expansion of the U.S. National Labor Relations Act, first written in 1935, to include added protections for gig economy workers. Changes in the law could have a dramatic, maybe fatal, effect on businesses like Uber, having to pay workers more or other benefit or offer benefits would certainly put a bigger question mark over the company's predicted $90 billion valuation. God, Uber's $90 billion now. Shit. When I asked driver Jeff Perry about this, he seized. If the company can't afford to pay its workers, he argued, it should not be worth anything at all. It's absolutely insane, he said. How is that possible? This is Silicon Valley nonsense. Math. Nonsense math. Or maths, as we say in normal countries. So it's a gig. You're a gig worker. The fact is, it's an app. You're not employed by Uber. You work with Uber. They get you work. Like, if you don't like it, then don't do it. And get yourself a proper taxi license. Become a taxi driver. You're whining about working 12 to 14 hours a day. I used to work for a... Um, probably the version of Uber before... Uber basically became... 
the thing that would make my old company probably go extinct, but they're still going strong as far as I know. The company I used to work for, it was airport transfers. Yeah, but they did, it wasn't strictly airport transfers, they did other transfers, but, you know, and the way it worked is you go on the website, you pay us, you pay a certain amount up front, and we'd find, you know, we'd have a list of other taxi companies all over the place, and we'd find you a taxi, and, you know, then take the profit, take the profit on top. You know, that's similar how Uber works, well, obviously Uber's done through an app, which is way more efficient, you know, it's like, psh, you know, a quicker thing. See, similar principles, though. Like those companies didn't work for us; they worked with us, and they bid, they bid how much they were willing to, um, you know, get paid for the journey. And we'd look at it and um, look at what was the best, you know, what was the best profit margin, and they get the fucking job. Well, sometimes, you know, we'd look at them and go, "No, they're shit. They'll fuck this up. We won't give it to them, and we'll take a lot of a pound." That's, but that's how it works. Like. You're not, you're not working for this company. You don't understand what you're up to. It's like complaining to Fiverr, going, "Well, I'm getting paid f- a fiver for my gig work." Yes, cause it's called fucking yes. So, yes, that's that's what it is. You don't have to. You really don't have to. If you want to look, if you want to be a proper taxi driver and earn more money, you can just apply for the license. Get a taxi. Get a proper taxi license. You know, and I know there's taxi drivers out there who are on Uber. You know, um, but at the same time, you don't have to. You you can do something else. You're not you're not tied in. The thing is, you're not tied in. You've got no contract. You can just walk away. Do you know how great freedom is when you can just walk away from something? You know, you don't have to hand it a note. It's just go. Nah, I'm not going to do it. You literally, you wake up in the morning, your own fucking body. You can wake up in the morning, look at the app, and go, Nah, fuck it going to do something else like some people some people are tied into contracts cannot leave you know you walk out of a job you fucking hate you can't even claim benefits because you walked out on the job you got to find another job before you get a job do you know what I'm saying you're like you literally have freedom 12 to 14 hours a day the the you can, you can tell who that is someone called Wheeler look I'll tell you this before I know Pakistani drivers from London not just London, actually Manchester as well and Birmingham, but like mainly the, the London ones, the ones that used to serve like Heathrow. Uh, they, I don't think there's, I don't think they actually sleep. I don't think they're human. Um, the amount, like literally, all times a day, fourteen hours. They'd laugh at you for working fourteen hours. They're like, what are you slacking? What is this? Your day off? You fuck? Get to work, fourteen hours a day. Their man is driving. I just some of them. I just, I just like what I like. Uh, a couple of times, when I'm, uh, there was a, a couple of occasions where one driver actually did ask the person to complete the journey so he could sleep in the back. That actually happened, um, but rarely. And they work their asses off, man. Because that's the immigrant mentality. You see, that's that's like you know, there's, there's all these problems with immigration and blah 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 blah. blah. But what you want, right, is the hardworking immigrant. That's what everybody bloody wants, don't it? That's what everyone wants, don't it? And, and that's the great example of immigration is, is just... I mean, look, look, straight up. Half of them couldn't speak any English. And so it would be a pain in the ass sometimes going, you need to be at Terminal 1. Terminal 1! And then, but, you know, luckily Heathrow's got a massive Asian population. There was always some Pakistani who could speak better English. So just pass the phone. Like, Hello, my friend. All right, I'll translate for you. Yeah, he doesn't have a clue what he's talking about. Yeah, it, but like, that's a slight problem. But in terms of driving, it's fine. It's an A to B situation. They got by because they got sat navs. It's, it's without sat navs, they'd probably be fucked. But we live in the future now, so it's fine. But like, what I'm saying is, is that that attitude is like, I think some companies would literally just set up a company and just go right let's fly all of our cousins over and we've got a whole fleet of taxi drivers like and I think some of them would literally just land and step straight you know fuck the pleasantries go for immigration and then just step straight into a taxi and just and get their first fare just like oh, I'll go, oh here's your taxi right I'll take your bags to your house get the fucking work 
and then they drive off. They'd be, you know, they'd be like literally a day in the day in the UK. They're a taxi driver. No, 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 even, you know, I'm sure that has happened at least once. What I'm saying is they come over, they work their fucking asses off, and they don't earn a hell of a lot, but it's better than what they were getting, and they build it, and they're working hard because they want to. You know, you hope they got a plan. If they haven't got a plan, then they're going to be dead young cause, and very tired. But, but like, they work their asses off. And when you got people like this just whinging, oh, working twelve hours a day, it's like I don't work twelve hours a day, but I used to. Okay, I used to. I used to work. 12, at one point, I was working twelve hours a day, seven days a week. Like, cause, cause you fucking had to. Like, and then I was like, fuck this, fuck this shit, and I bailed, and it was hard. But, I, but it was the best thing I ever did. I walked away. I just went, fuck this. Went for something else. Was like, oh. No. Just for, I used to have excuses. I don't, I don't bother with excuses anymore. I realise what I had to do. You just... And how they're protesting. What? They, they don't owe you shit. You, do you not realise? You ain't owed nothing from Uber. You, it's just a convenience thing. You want to get paid more? Set up your own Uber. Set up a rival. They got Grab out here. Do you know what I'm saying? Set up a rival. Pay your drivers better. Take a smaller profit. Live with that. Mm -hmm. Get make it. I mean, the technology. You know. God, there's plenty of websites out there. We can work with fucking app developers and shit. I'm looking down and say, let's fucking rival Uber. There's room for competition. Don't let Uber be like the dominant force. Be like, if you want to say fuck Uber, then actually fuck them by making something better and paying your drivers better. You know? Be better than Uber. Create, you know, that's how you fuck your enemies. <laughs> be better. You know, you're going to be out there going, meh, 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 meh. like, you don't have to work for them. You can just walk away. What do, what do you want from them? You think they're gonna give you more money? You think they get like, you know, they probably think they're paying you fairly anyway. If you walk into something with your eyes wide open, and you think, right, this is how much I get for a journey, this is how much Uber gets, this is how much I get, right, well, um, in order to like sustain sustain my life, how many hours do I need to work a day? And if it comes up to fourteen hours, and you don't want to walk for fourteen hours a day. Then don't do it. Do something else. Do something else. Do you know what I mean? Do something else. There are better paying jobs out there where you don't have to work 14 hours a day. It's out there. And do you know who will take your place? A hard working immigrant will take your place and they'll build on that. It's the stepping stones. There's many different, I mean, look, not all immigrants are the same. Certain cultures. <laughs> yeah. You know, you get the ones who, who just come in and just be like, right, you know, I'm going to do this. I'm going to work fucking 20 hours a day for five years and I'm going to do this. I'm gonna do, you know, they got a plan, man. It's stepping stones. It's stepping stones. Stepping towards something. They will take your fucking place. This is the thing. This is why minimum wage is bullshit. All this stuff is bullshit. Cause someone will work for less and then they will earn more value. They'll get more value. You know, they'll work harder than you. They'll work harder than you. Right, and that's why it's shit minimum wage because like the value should be your hard work. When you're just set at a certain rate, there's no incentive. Well, I'm just gonna get this money anyway, whether I do or don't. I'm not gonna get a fucking pay rise because I'm nothing. Do you know what I mean? For some, but it's good that there is a business model out there where some people are coming and go. We're gonna kill this because other people won't because it's too much for them. We'll kill this. And they'll move on to the next thing. That's the way it should work. That's the way it should work. It should be a rival, some rival. It just needs a rival company. That'll sort it all out. Don't be begging them for fucking shit. Don't be begging Uber for shit. Don't be out protesting. It's a waste of time. A complete waste of time. Think bigger. Because you will be replaced. There are people out there more hungrier and more desperate than you and you will be replaced like that this is how it works this is why people voted this is why a lot of people voted for Brexit 
you might not understand is because there are people that will can freely move into the country and will work harder for you will work harder than sorry for you not for you will work harder than you are willing to and they'll take your fucking job it's not about like oh they're taking our jobs is the fact that yes they are taking your job because and then you get companies who are like well we don't need to we can pay them this much money because it's minimum wage we only need to pay them this much money the law says we only pay this much money and you know you get replaced because you're not willing to work for fuck all what are you going to do what are you going to do when you're not willing to work long hours for fuck all money what's your plan who's who's got your back what are you going to do what's your what's your next what's your next what's what's next for you think about it what are you going to do next tell me i'd love to hear about it